Welcome, welcome everybody to this week's Cafecito Power Break. This is going to be a great conversation today. I'm so excited for today's guest. Um, welcome, Dr. Pat Baxter. Uh, this is going to be a great com conversation, so I'm so excited to have you here. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm excited to be here too. Yay, and I love your pin. <laughs> Did you just notice that? <laughs> yes, it looks it looks perfect. Como no, como no. <laughs> como no, exacto. Yep. <laughs> I love it. Well, thank you so much. I I'm so excited for this topic because this is such a, a critical topic for all of us to really get wrap our heads around. Let's say <laughs> not our hands around, our heads around. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to be talking about. Um, and before we get into that, why don't you give us a little quick intro on you first. Introduce yourself. Okay, well, uh, my name is uh, Dr. Pat Baxter. Yo soy de Nueva York. Mis padres eran puertorriqueños. Uh, I uh, have been uh, in the field of organizational leadership, organizational change, worked all over the world on, uh, on that subject, helping leaders be the best leader they could be. And I'm particularly uh, focused on women leaders in organizations, which we need more than ever uh, in, in this world. And my work continues coaching women uh, at who are emerging leaders or who are already established leaders. And this is my passion. My purpose is to be the resource I never had growing up in corporate America. That is amazing work that you're doing. And thank you so much for sharing that. Um, so this is, uh, I love this subject. So we're going to dive into right into emotional intelligence and women at work. And how would you define like emotional intelligence? Like give us however you would define it. Uh, and then we'll go into why it's particularly important in the workplace. Yeah. Well, first, let's start with the workplace. Uh, the workplace is, is more than dynamic. It's really a, sometimes a powder keg. And the reason it is, is because here's the news, we're human. And we were born with emotions. And we have emotions. That's one of the things when I was doing my, my research on the subject, I really wanted to understand why do we have emotions? Why were they embedded in us and why do they drive so much of our relationships and our thinking and the like? We were born with emotions, frankly, to help us survive. They keep us tuned in to our environment, to ourselves, what our motivations are. And emotional intelligence is, some may not think so, but it is a skill set. You have the emotions. It's a matter of how you utilize them to move forward in your life, to connect with people, to get good things and sometimes bad things done. Uh, and emotional intelligence can be a developed skill set. And the, the, the environment today, emotions are not considered an asset. They are considered especially for women. Um, I, I grew up on Wall Street. So women on Wall Street were expected to either be, you know, a secretary or someone in the cafeteria, not necessarily someone who actually made things happen. And there were many times I was told to keep it in and not show my emotions. And frankly, that led me to doing a lot of drinking. <laughs> over the years and it's not it's not something that is either healthy or needed we can learn to control our emotions to tune into our emotions and that's one thing that i want to make sure we we talk about is how how do we manage that so our emotions have a purpose we can use them to our benefit or to our detriment so the, I love this. Um, so let's talk about the emotion side of things, right? Sometimes, <clears throat> how do we know which emotions, number one, are rational and irrational, right? How do we know that some are, they're the correct 
and I don't know if that's the right word, right? If they're the right emotions to be feeling in that moment, or if we're overthinking things, like there's all these other elements I feel. And then sometimes there's cultural baggage that has led us to feel like, okay, things should be this way. And that's the only way I saw it. And this is the way it should be. Otherwise it's wrong versus being open to, to the possibility of, okay, hold on. Am I, is my, are my emotions of feeling upset about this thing or indifferent about this thing? Are those the right feelings that I should be feeling? You, you, you have hit it when you said about, when you talked about the, the cultural aspects of emotions. Um, we had an uncle who lived with us and between, I, I guess I was like between four and maybe about 13, 14. As I got older, he, he would say to me, Patricia, you need to control your emotions. Don't look like that. Do this, do that. And I'm like, okay. And what that does is that, that patted down a lot of real stuff. And my my philosophy this these days is, well, you know, God bless you, Uncle Theo. That's fine. But for me now, what I encourage the women I coach to do is to stay in tune, name the emotion and what triggered it. And that's a vital part of emotional intelligence is that self-awareness, knowing well, tuning in to what it is you're feeling and finding a name for it. There, there's a very wide range uh, of emotions. Like think about anger. Anger can go anywhere from annoyance. Uh, you, you're bothering me a little bit, so go away. All the way to rage, which results in something that nobody wants. So Knowing that range, uh, knowing what that emotion is, knowing the range, knowing where you are in that range, and having a few tools to help you manage <laughs> getting through that emotion and having it work for you and against, uh, not against you. So if you are, if you're really angry, there's a good chance that you should be able to say, you know what? I don't feel so well. My stomach hurts or, or, oh, you know what? The, the, the pot is overboiling. <laughs> Let me get over there and move, remove yourself from what's triggering you. But as long as you understand who you are, what triggers you, what emotion you're, you're feeling, and you have a way to manage through that, you'll be okay no matter what the circumstance is. Does that help? Mm, absolutely. And and I think this applies to probably the majority of our community, you know, like, especially in this age, right? We grew up with, I mean, I didn't particularly have an uncle that said that, but th that thinking that, you know, stay in a certain, you know, place be or quiet. be quiet, don't speak. So I love that you said, because I think anybody watching this has felt like they've had to feel something and they've had to push it down Okay, I can't express that. I can't, uh, you know, uh, just release that in some way, whatever that is. Um, and I've had to push it down. And what does that do over time? Right. Um, you know, there's a lot of self-doubt that comes from that. There's a lot of question like, well, I shouldn't be feeling this. Now I feel guilty for feeling this because I'm told that this isn't the right emotion. You know, so all of these things, I think, happen maybe within nanoseconds in our brain. I, I don't know, right, where we're just analyzing like, okay, well, what is the right thing I should be feeling? But and and, and that's just general. I want to. We're going to dive into the workplace because I know it has like a little extra specific to that. Uh, but I, but it starts at home, right? It starts in our upbringing, mm -hmm. and it starts in us being able to regulate ourselves or or just understand. I think for me is understand where's that thought coming from. Why do I feel like that in this moment? What what is it that I'm really upset about, or what is it that I'm really different? about in this moment and question it that's that you know that that's right. you know versus i see some people just just actively thinking and i'm like and it's not the control even though that's the, I, that's the same verbiage we all help you know right. heard kind of growing up but it's i love the word that you added manage you know it's really managing ourselves so that we can really be the best version of ourselves not some 
emotional yeah. ball of <laughs> Sometimes, sometimes, and, and it's interesting you said that the the past very often triggers our present. We we have these these behavioral loops that constantly are, are coming into our, our lives. Or and I'm sure there are people who who say, you know, I felt that, like that once when I was ten, when I was fifteen, when I was thirty five. <laughs> But knowing what triggered it then, what's triggering it now, is it that memory or is it an actual aspect of the situation you're in? And that kind of analysis helps you back away and be able to look at it a little bit more in a, in a more balanced, more balanced way. And that that certainly has has helped in, in many of my personal relationships in the workplace, the thing that really, really works for us as, as women, as humans, is this thing called empathy. That, that ability to, to say, I understand. I may not have the exact same set of circumstances as you, but I understand. And ask the question, tell me more. Tell me more about how you're feeling. Tell me how it looks like from your point of view. That kind of exchange, which I have had with many clients and, and with many staff members, that just kind of makes people say, oh, you heard me. You heard me. You saw me. That matters. And in, in the workplace, for, for, for me, and this is, this is path thinking, I, be, I really believe that women have that innate talent to reach out and say, tell me more and you can trust me and develop a positive relationship as opposed to an adversarial one. And that, that really matters, especially today, because we, we do have many different types of confrontations that can happen in the workplace, not the least of which, you know, women in a position of authority, knowing how to connect with people. And as a matter of fact, I, I, I wrote a, a, a whole article on just what women in the workplace can do in terms in, in a in a digital workplace um and that i that i think is a very important aspect of it especially since like you and i we're removed we're not in the same room yeah we're not in the same room so we have to use other tools our facial expressions um you know our hands i'm always talking with my hands <laughs> is that is that that's a cultural thing or that's an I got emotions right because you're when you're passionate you know exactly. about something yeah exactly that, I mean I can't help it I can't help it that's who that's who I am and and that I think is a very important part of emotional intelligence is being aware of who you are bringing yourself to into the con conversation into the flow of what's happening. And again, for, for, for women, you know, based on some of the, the research I've done, this actually is an aspect of the female brain. And the female brain is unique. It is quite different from the male brain when it comes to emotional intelligence and emotional regulation. Uh, we are affected not only by our environment, but we are affected hormonal, uh, har with hormones. And that I think is an important part. I know I've coached a number of uh, leaders younger than myself and we work through it. We understand. I said, the first thing you got to do is understand what's happening clinically and chemically. It's up to you to do something about it. But if you're aware of it, you've got the power. Um, that's so interesting. Um, yeah, I mean, our emotions totally, right? Sometimes you could be in the nicest person and an emotion is off, your chemistry, your body chemistry is off and you're wonder, you're finding yourself, you know, maybe being, you know, I don't know, overly emotional on something and it's 
you don't even attribute it. I know there's been times in my, even in my younger 20s, I've been like, I'd get mad at something, not really mad, you know, but just like, and then I'd be like, well, why am I mad? I don't even know why I'm mad. And I'd say that to my, I'd say it out loud, like, yeah. because I'm acknowledging the fact that I know, like, well, I don't understand what's going on. I feel overly emotional on something, but I know it's not the right thing, you know, and that's all I knew at that time. Like, yeah, I don't, and I don't there's know your power. There's your power. And there is the opportunity to say, I really don't know what's going on right now within me. And that might be affecting the outcome I want to be selfish about. I want a certain outcome with you. What I'm doing, feeling, saying, my facial expressions. Have you ever had somebody look at your face and say, are you mad? And you go, no, I'm not mad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm just having a stomach cramp <laughs> or something, right? Yeah, yeah. And it and it, it, that's another thing I wanted to, to 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 bring out in terms of emotional intelligence. A lot of what you're emotionally dealing with comes out in your body. If it's not a stomach ache, it'll be a headache. If it'll be if it's like, I I hate you. I don't like you. I don't want to be here it's going to show up. So being aware of how it's showing up in your body is one way of making emotional intelligence work for you. And we do have these positions sometimes where people feel threatened or challenged yeah. uh, and they will either challenge you back or they'll step back or they'll discontinue the conversation. Mm -hmm. So being aware of how you're looking, how you're expressing yourself physically is, is a very important part of this process of making emotional intelligence work for you, and especially in a sensitive workplace, which I, I believe every workplace is now. Yeah. Yep, it should be. So how does emotional intelligence differ from other leadership skills? And why does that particularly matter for women in leadership positions? Well, I think, I think all leadership skills lead to two outcomes. One, the development of trust. Can I trust you as a person, as a leader? Are you do you have the best interests of not only the company or the entity, whatever it is, and me? Do you have that ability to make me feel that I can trust you with what I'm going to give you, whatever that is? The other part of it is um, po developing positive relationships. If you've ever been in a, a large organization, it's very interesting, and I've been in a lot of them. Um, people will, once they, they trust you and they, they know that they can trust you with their secrets or ideas, they will tell you what they have experienced in, in the organization. And that includes leaders who are not positive in the way how they deal with people. So people, you know, people have said to me, well, you know, um, you don't want to trust so-and-so because this is what happened to me. The key to emotional and using emotional intelligence intelligently is to understand your outcomes have to be, I have your trust, I have earned it, and a positive relationship with you and the rest of our organization, and I am seen as a trustworthy and trusted resource. That's the outcome. And it's wow. especially important for women. Absolutely. I love that you brought up that um, the trust thing, because people do want to feel that way. Our team does want to feel like you trust them, you give them the benefit of the doubt even. Um, all right, so we have some uh, comment from Alexandria. I wrestle with my anxiety and depression and working through my emotions. Uh, yeah, so do you have any thoughts on that? How she can maybe regulate or? Um... 
Yeah. Well, it, it, in, in my exper experience, and I've had anxiety and, and depression for mm -hmm. other reasons, um, but being able to, as I said, name what it is you're feeling and understanding whether that is a, a chemical uh, experience that you're having mm -hmm. and if there's some way for your, your health advisors to help you with that reaction. That's a really important thing. Yeah. Um, and then there are, there's finding ways to, to lift that, that darkness that comes down. Believe me, been there, done that, got the t-shirt. It's like, it comes down on you. Yeah. And it's very hard to see through that, that curtain. What I would suggest is having, having someone or something or somewhere mm -hmm. that you can, when you feel that curtain coming down, you can reach out to. Sometimes it's even walking right outside to get sunlight. And sunlight is critical for managing those kinds of, of responses, bodily real responses, is getting sunlight. And there's so much research now on that. Um, just read something this morning, another study this morning about how sun, sun, sunlight actually reclicks your mind. It kind of resets it. And yeah. being with nature also is, is mission critical in terms of dealing with that. So keep, keep doing that and find ways to do it. Yeah. Um, that's so important the sunlight and exercise like we and that's so true because w especially with COVID so many people are doing remote work and they're in their homes they're not getting enough sunlight and that absolutely attributes it so she has some she, some great additional comments that I think maybe you can uh, help on uh, so I struggle to believe I belong in leadership that's the first one you're spot on on the curtain um, on the curtain scenario uh, example uh, but how do I not show my anxiety? It's better to be up front with, is it, is it better to be up front with leadership or not mention it? Well, that, that's a, that's a really, uh, how should I say this? It do depends. You, my question is, <laughs> my question is this, how, do you trust your leaders? Mm. You trust them. Yeah. All right. I, I hate, I hate to say it like this, but sometimes people will use things against you. So your question is, do I trust this person to confide in the anxiety, the, 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 the feelings that I have, do I trust them enough? Yeah. And if you do well, then share it. Um, and if you, you don't, then you need to find another resource to express that to. Um, one thing I always always do with my clients journal journal is journaling is a magic thing i don't know i've been journaling yeah. i don't know forever but there there really is a lot of scientific uh research and substance to the connection between what you're thinking what you're feeling and what you're doing with your hand and writing it and and what i have found is sometimes i write out what's happening and what I'm feeling and how mad, sad, everything that you can think of. I mean, I, um, I lost my sister recently. So you, 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 you write that down, you write that out. You have to let it, you have to have some form of release. You have to yeah. let everything that's bottled up. Cause we keep it all, especially as women, we yeah. bottle up everything. And then it just comes out in ways, you know, sometimes we just like anxiety and different things. You know, exactly, life. exactly. So then the, the, the way to deal with it is to get it out of you and put it somewhere else. Yeah, journaling is great for that. Just get it on paper and just express it, you know. Nobody has to read it, you know, you just, you're just expressing it. Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. If someone finds it in a hundred years from now, you're welcome to it. They They'll relate move. to it. They'll relate to it. They will relate to it. And you know what, like another, somebody just taught me recently that we we're having this little bit of this conversation. It's like, you know, sometimes wherever that you feel that anxiety, you know, sometimes it's in your chest, do some tapping, do some like, things oh, yeah. 
shift, you know, your energy. If you got a headache or you're just like, not, you know, just start tapping your head. Just there, we have a great workshop actually from one of our members uh, that did a tapping exercise. And I, I found the other day, I was just for no reason. Sometimes we wake up and we're like, why am I so anxiety? Is it the million things I have to do today? <laughs> you know, right? Sometimes we feel like that. And then I just, I just started tapping my chest because she's like, just tap wherever you feel it. And I'm like, okay. So I started doing that and I'm like, you know what? This stuff works. You know, yeah. and it's, it, it's not something that's wrong with us. It's something that it's, you know, we have to just learn how to regulate ourselves and learn how to, I mean, I think the journey of mastering and learning us is the journey, right? Yes. What, yes. Is, is the thing. That's beautiful. Um, that's per, that is absolutely, that is absolutely the journey. It's us. Yeah. We are uncovering what we're really capable of doing, and we're struggling with what what we, what it is, what is, and what we think or taught it is. You know, mm -hmm. uh, that's right, and it's up to us to believe what what we've been told or not. Exactly, exactly. Question everything. That's what I say. <laughs> uh, so, how can women leaders uh, cultivate and enhance their emotional intelligence skill over time? How do we how do we do that? How do we cultivate that? The, the key is self-awareness and realizing as we journey through our lives, we do shift, you know, we shift based on our experiences, based on who influences us, being clear about who we are, self-aware. What is my, what do I tend to do? I, sometimes I shut down. I shut down because I, I can't take any more in. I can't take any more in. And I'm aware of that. And when that yeah. happens, I have my tools. I have my routines that I go into so I can release it and then come back to where I want to be. You know, working, working with, with people. Now, one of the things that, that, um, I've done over the years is this self-awareness sometimes requires a tool. Sometimes you, you want to get a snapshot of who you are. And there, there's a ton of different kinds of assessments that you can take in the moment. And it will give you a snapshot of where you are right then and there. And when I use these kinds of assessments with clients, we, we look at the results. We talk about what were you thinking? Where were you? Was this just before, or just after some kind of critical incident? Because there are some things that indicate you were upset. Um, so assessments are a great way to take that snapshot and getting it, getting it processed either through a report that comes through the assessment or talking it through with someone you trust or talking it through with uh, a, a development or leadership professional, that can help you a lot. That can help a lot. It's, it's really a, a good way to, to capture what's happening to more objectively. When it's on paper, you can look at it a little more objectively than what you're feeling in here. Yeah, yeah. And I love that you mentioned empathy earlier, you know, and I think as women and as, you know, whether you give birth or not, I think just even as women, we have this nurture mentality innately, you know, that I think we're always looking out for the best interest and want to make sure that everyone, our kids are taken care of, everybody's, everybody's okay and <laughs> yeah. healthy. And I love that um, you kind of mentioned that and allude to that when it comes to leadership, you know, we, as, as being very highly empathetic, many of us, and I don't know, I don't know what, I don't know if that's a factor, but I think we are, but I think we're really, uh, well, I don't know. You do, <laughs> women women leaders? Yes. yes. Women, women, um, it's interesting. The, 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 the scientific uh, aspect of this indicate that women are far more empathetic mm -hmm. th than men, but you have to take a look at the experience, the culture, yeah. You know, the the societal expectations, you know, that are around it. But the, that based on what I've read and, and seen and experienced, yeah, we we have that. And you're right. It doesn't mean that you have to have given birth to another being. Mm -hmm. 
birth to a business, right, <laughs> you know, yeah. birth, birth to a house. I mean, yeah. it's it's all in what you create and whatever you create, you've given birth to. Yeah. I love that. I lo it is that that's the word. It's the it's the create word. Um because we are very, you know, just passionate beings and, you know, intrinsically. So, you know, when it comes to leadership, looking out for the best interests of everybody on board, making sure that I don't, and especially as Latina women, where we don't want, we want, what do you need? You know, we're very like, what do you need to be happy and healthy and whole? And, you know, but, and sometimes we don't do that for ourselves, but we, we can do that for others. That's, man, that's all. Dr. Pat, I got to have you on again, or we got to do a whole like se hour session of this because it's just way, way too much to cover. Yes, um, <laughs> there's a lot. <laughs> yeah, but but I love that. And I uh, I think that we can be better leaders and the more that we learn how to self-regulate and, and, and really understand the group, right? It, really understand the teams that we're working with and, and everyone else. Yes, um, and, and walk in their shoes. And walk in their shoes. So, do you think what men and women differ when it comes to emotional intelligence? Uh, interesting. Uh, a couple months ago, um, I, I I was doing uh, a presentation, and one of the things I shared is that okay, so I, I've had a lot of leaders myself over thirty plus years in, in in corporate America. I have three people who I would call the best leaders I've ever worked. I would follow them anywhere. Two of them were men. And one of them, a, a woman that frankly, when I first interviewed with her, I wasn't impressed. But, you know, the, the, the fact that these three leaders did one thing and they always asked, how are you? Not all, not all about what are you doing for me? How are you doing? Yeah. How's going? How, how things they, they knew my, my, my husband was ill. How's he doing? It doesn't take much yeah. to get people to trust you and connect with you on a level that you give them your trust as well. Yeah. I love that. People people want to know that you care. That's how you we know that other people are human, right? Like there's some level of, of that, you know, like if you tell them something difficult or if you're going through something difficult, it's the, how are you? I know something's off. Let me check in and just kind of ask you. And, and, and not enough of that happens yet, but we're getting there. We're getting yeah. there. Too. <laughs> we're, we're getting there. It's the, it's the awareness that it matters. The numbers don't tell you everything, yeah. you know, that's that's going on in the organization. Um, and once you get people to to trust you and you as a leader are self-aware of what might be going on in your head and in your heart. Once you're aware of that, you can you can connect and you can lead people in the way they want you to lead them. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love that. We are over time and I don't want this to end. I really don't because this is <laughs> this is so great. Everybody's commenting. Great. I'll talk. come back anytime you want. Yes, yes, yes. Um, all right. So but before we go, give us a wrap up of just kind of your last words of, of some sound bites that you want to give someone, you know, someone's listening. So they're in leadership position. We have women that are trying to get into higher leadership positions. Any thoughts on um you know, on this topic and how it can maybe support them, even though I think the whole episode can. <laughs> <laughs> um, what, one, one of my favorite uh, statements is emotion is not a four letter word. And use it, use your emotions to connect with people because the, the only thing that will follow you besides your reputation are people. <laughs> You know, you've got to make sure that you are showing who you are, that you can be trusted and are trustworthy. And the leadership opportunities, I really do believe, will come to you because people say, you know who you should talk to? I would trust. And your name comes up. And that's a very important thing for, for women is to make sure your name comes up 
in various situations where people say, you know, I didn't know what to do, but I went to so-and-so and she helped me out. You, you know, we need a little publicity to get along in organizations and to be seen. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love that. Be the resource. If somebody's coming to you, be that person. And sometimes we have to give a lot. And that's the that's the thing of life, right? What we give, we get back. So if we're giving, even if it's giving a bit of our time to help someone out in a situation, I love that you said that. It will eventually come back to you because that is what you're giving out there. You're giving out the energy that, yes, I can be a resource. You can depend on me. You can trust me. And therefore, I believe, you know, that will eventually, and it does in so many ways. It, it's a rule of the universe. What you it's give, a rule you of get. The universe. Mm -hmm. It is a rule. It is a rule. And whether where we're whether we're emotionally off because we're going through Something. aging <laughs> stuff, life stuff, you know, it's still it's it's the being able to regulate and check. Like, okay, I'm going through something, but let me give out. Still, continue to uh, work on giving out that giving nature and that giving uh, energy. So. Dr. Pat, you are so awesome. Thank you so much for being a guest for today. And uh, I'm so happy that you're part of our Thank network. You. And I look forward to doing more things with you because these are the topics we need more of. We need more conversations around these and, and we need to have them more often. And, and that's why United Latinas will be a trusted organization and resource because we're talking about the things that really matter. Mm -hmm. Man, absolutely. That is what we are about, is bringing up these topics. That's you why better. I joined. That's I, why yes. I joined. Yes, yes. And if you're not a member, join and feel free to join us in the hub, the mighty hub, unitedlatinas.mn.co. You can join in there for free and then, then you can hop and, and get to learn all the different things that we're doing. Monica wrote very insightful conversation. This is awesome. Latinas have it for sure. You got a lot of great comments here. Thank you guys for tuning in. Um, Catches in the Mighty Hub because we, we're going to figure out how to do some more of these and some more live streams with Dr. Pat so we can get some more of her insight. But thank you again and thank you all for joining us. Hope you have a blessed day. Take care.